Hello everyone, it is Joe here from Omnipoke, the channel that brings you guys everything Pokemon. If you're looking for PTCGO codes, including the new Rebel Clash stuff, go ahead and check out the Potown store. You can get a 5% discount on your orders using that code Omnipoke. For today's video, we are looking at the Rebel Clash buy list. Uh, I'm going to be going over some of the most important cards that you should be picking up if you are looking to keep up to date with the meta, as well as a handful of more speculative stuff that maybe catches your eye, you can pick up some of those as well. So I have this split up into two categories. First of all, the core essentials. These are cards that I believe will be involved in tier one and two contenders or have obvious future potential and are worth having in the binder for when uh, new cards potentially come out and um, these cards can really sort of realize that potential. So we'll start off uh, on this side here with the uh, scoop up net and the boss's orders. These are two of the best um, item and supporter cards that we're getting out of this set. Boss's orders is uh, a new supporter means of gust. Very simple, very effective. It's going to be used in pretty much every deck going forward, apart from ones using a nine temptations approach and possibly a handful of decks uh, still going towards um, custom catchers. But in general, I imagine at least a two count of boss's orders in a huge array of decks. If you are trying to sort of pinch some pennies, I think you can get away with just buying two or three copies of this. Um, but four, if you want to have... Um, you know, the option in certain decks, you will go for that full count. Scoop Up Net is also just definitely a great four of to pick up. Um, I've played plenty of lists so far in this format where four has just been the gold standard. It's able to pick up a Pokemon that isn't a V or GX and put it immediately into your hand and you discard all cards attached. This is great for um, Stellar Wishing. It's great for Mind Report Mewtwo. It's great for some more gimmicky stuff like Jirachi Prism combos, which I've been trying maybe more than most. Uh, so these are all fun things, but in general, Scoop Up Net is a phenomenal option. Tool Scrapper just below it. Uh, I feel like you only ever need to pick up a couple of these, um, even though it is one of these versatile options. You're never going to need too many. Um, it's some nice removal of tools that can come in. Helpful against Big Charm, helpful against removing switching outs for certain people as well. Maybe even um, removing uh, frying pans. Uh, that can be a useful option, but I don't think you need too many of them. Full Bucket is one of these cards that I have on here, more so for its future potential. It's not like phenomenal right now, but it's definitely great in a vacuum for water decks. And it's one that's going to be relatively inexpensive. I usually try and be a bit more conservative with items. You may as well just pick them up because they're not going to break the bank. Same thing for Gala Mine. It's an excellent stadium card, forcing um, an additional two retreat cost on the active Pokemon, which is really annoying for a lot of decks. It can help you trap if you are going to try and play controlling style archetypes, or it can just be another means of forcing your opponent to have additional outs from just promoting their Jirachi with an escape board, similar to how Absol has seen so much play in the format. I can see Gallimine sometimes being just like a one or two of uh, to threaten that stadium war and force things out of play, whilst also disrupting Jirachi engines, which is just excellent. We have four phenomenal um, special energies from this set. Speed, Lightning Energy, and Horror Psychic Energy both immediately enter the format with um, some top tier contenders. There's Dragapult that you can see on this slide already, the VMAX, and Speed Lightning Energy can work alongside that Bolton V that you can see, as well as alongside Picarom and Toxtricity. So these decks immediately have homes and are gonna be played in high counts. The Picarom I've been playtesting with plays a full four count of Speed Energy. A lot of Dragapult lists are playing the full four horror. Capture energy as well. It's impressed me, even though I've only had the chance to play with it for a couple of weeks. Um, it's working out quite nicely in control. And honestly, I'm making cuts for this card over things like Recycle Energy that we've seen in decks previously, even if it is just like a one count, because it's an extra means of getting a Pokemon directly into play. And sometimes that can be things like Zation, so that you can get extra draws if you are a mill deck or if you're uh, trying other stuff. Uh, or just if you're trying to evolve or whatever, it can help you get your basic down in the early turn. So Capture Energy is excellent. And as soon as we start seeing archetypes that can afford to have that colorless attack cost, uh, Capture Energy becomes a, a gold standard for of for sure. Right now in the format, there aren't that many. That's why it wasn't rated uh, super high on my set review. But the internal strength of Capture Energy is just nuts. Same thing for Twin Energy. Right now, not many great homes for it. I don't think it's going to be breaking out tier one stuff immediately, but as soon as we get some better 
uh, twin energy one prize attackers. This is like just absolutely nuts. So you want to pick these up when you can. Dragapult V Max and Dragapult V. I am saying go ahead and get the full 4-4 four, four count. I have tried a little bit of 4-3 uh, sometimes, but you really do want to have that thick Dragapult V line because you want to get the V down turn 1, you want to get an attachment, you want to get the V Max turn 2, and an attachment. It's like a very simple deck where you just go through uh, those motions and you just try and let your supporters and the actual attacks do the talking. And just make sure that you don't miss a beat with the deck. So maxing out these counts does feel very important. Uh, it is proving to be like as strong as predicted. So definitely a top tier contender for me. Copperage, I've said a 2 plus on these if you want to try out this VMAX. I would uh, not hesitate in really picking up like a 2-2 two -two line of this. Just because it could end up making its way into adp -zation. Um, but I would also think about potentially adding in more if you want to try out a tanky build uh, with things like um, Malolanas and Luke Metal and stuff like that. I think that is kind of lower tier, um, but definitely something to consider if it's something uh, that you want to experiment with. Eldegoss V is one of these cards similar to uh, Tapu Lele's, Shaman EX's, these sorts of things where it can just go in a handful of decks um, just because of that Happy March ability alone. You can get supporters straight back from a discard pile. Currently, I've got it in Pika Rom, but a lot of my other lists, in fairness, have been going for Scoop Up Net combo alongside Mind Report Mewtwo and Oranguru instead. So if you feel like you're going to be playing Scoop Up Net Mewtwo in things like Dragapult, in things like ADP, you don't have to rush out and grab your Elder Goss V straight away, but I really would be picking up two because I think you'll get value from it later down the line for sure. Um, I think more often than not, we'll see it as a one count um, in decks where it does come in, but um, that's not to say that in the future it's not going to be a bit more used. Bolton V, I've slipped into my ADP. I've also had it in my Toxtricity de uh, deck list as well as a one or two count at times. Um, so I believe that's kind of the lowest number I would look to pick up. And if you want to try out a Turbo Bolton list, um, you can increase that count as well. Ninetales V seems like one of these cards that could easily go into Firebox. I've also tried it out in some Sandaconda um, Colossal type stuff as well. It could even be a one-of in um, Baby Blounds as well uh, because that tail shape-shifting is very versatile. It can help you against a Rangaroo. It can help you um, against ADP in certain spots. It can copy a handful of very strong attacks. It's even good against Dragapult players. Um, to give yourself some extra damage control on your side, which is pretty rare for the fire decks. Normally they have control over gusting, uh, but being able to put some damage counters um, into play to put the Dragapult VMAX in range of some of these attacks can sometimes be a really big deal. So Ninetales V has found itself to be versatile enough to be worth the one of, I think, in a lot of these Welder based decks. And Galarian Meowth um, has that really awesome ability that can go ahead and help grab the Perserkers straight out of the deck. Um, which is nice for turbozation variants, which I believe are going to be as good as ADP variants going forward. Um, so, yeah, I would think about getting two Meowths. Uh, I haven't really made space for any more Perserkers um, in my list, so I think a 2-2 two -two line is pretty much all you need. But if you want to commit more so into it, you certainly can go for that. On to the more Believer-style buy list now. I wouldn't mind if you didn't buy any of the cards on this slide, but any ones that take your fancy, you can certainly go ahead and go for it. I think right now, obviously, with the coronavirus, there are no tournaments immediately, so my main advice for this sort of slide would certainly be try it out on PTCGO first, get a feel for the deck, see if you like it or not. If the answer is no, you can try and trade for something else on this slide, for example, and then give that a fair crack of the whip. If you find something that you like and is underappreciated or undervalued, um, you can certainly commit to those sorts of things. That's what's great about uh, PTGO right now as a resource. I would certainly recommend it. Um, there's no real reason not to when tournaments are on standby. So this slide is meant for cards that I believe will end up in the mid-tier contenders kind of category. They can sometimes have a breakout performance here and there, but are never really going to be setting tournaments alight, or they have a good amount of potential. There's a bunch of VMAXs in this set, all of which I think are slightly below the bar when basically comparing them to Dragapult, unfortunately. Uh, Rillaboom's an interesting one. I feel like this kind of goes alongside the um, base set Sword and Shield Rillaboom for acceleration. It has a big damage 
buff behind it, you can get up to 280 damage, and you have this Turfield Stadium. Um, you can also think about getting Turfield even just as a future type card. I almost put this on the first slide, similar to the uh, full bucket, uh, because this stadium is just nice for any grass deck that comes out in the format, so there may be a little bit extra consideration for that Turfield Stadium. Right now, I would only think about it if you're going to be trying out Rillaboom variants or trying out some Flapple stuff, which also ends up on this slide, so that's why we've gone for that. Um, for Inteleon VMAX, if you are thinking its energy disruption is strong in the format, if you like its sniping potential, by all means go for it. Malamar VMAX, again, if you like its type coverage, if you like its disruption, go ahead and go for it. I really wouldn't go out and, like, spend all your money on all this sort of stuff, but take your pick and, um, sort of go with that if you want to have a more fun stuff for League or whatever. Uh, Cinderace VMAX is certainly tanky, it can punish people that hit into you at times so you got to have a thick line that's kind of the issue with all these vmaxes you need to commit so much capital into these if you want to make them work now toxtricity vmax again similar to the turf field was really close to making its way onto that first slide personally because i think it's just too much of a bit of a beat down style approach it's not going to make it to the top tier um compared to things like picaron which just currently until rotation at least works just far more consistently than it um, I've seen it brick quite a few times when I've queued into it on the ladder so far and it can, you know, just lead to free wins on your side. So I think just the lack of consistency when trying to set up a couple stage ones all at once is what held me back from putting it, um, you know, on that initial slide. Uh, I remember in the set review I rated it pretty high for that damage um, that it can dish out, but do bear in mind a decent chunk of Dragapults are playing Giant Bomb. That makes your matchup way more difficult a lot of the time. Obviously, your baseline is 160, so you don't have to poison them, but um, it just makes you have slower turns, which is sometimes very awkward for you. Um, also, I think there's still going to be the threats of Mill. There's going to be the threats of Baby Blounds, and Toxtricity has a tough time against those. Even things like ADP Spiritomb keeps up in this format, and Toxtricity just being a sort of vanilla beat stick may not be enough to cut it against those. I don't think it's got a like wide enough matchup spread. I think it's quite focused on facing other tag team decks, and um, that's going to be its wheelhouse, really. But I do think it is very effective at getting the job done against those sorts of builds, so it may still be worth forking out for. Um, Garbodor, even though it's right now just BFFs with uh, Toxtricity VMAX, it may just be a damage mod at some point, uh, so it may be worth picking up uh, a handful of garbs. Uh, at the bottom here, we've got Colossal and Sandaconda V. Colossal's a new accelerator from the discard pile that can get two energies at once, one of them being fire and one of them being fighting. For me, it screams like mad potential here. I am a little bit concerned about anything one prize related in this format with Dragapult kind of taking control, but um, Colossal just does provide some great acceleration. And when he is into play, he has 160 hit points, which is just a very nice option. Sandaconda V does a decent setup attack when you are going second, so you don't even need to hit your candy turn two if you are the player going second. Um, and it has that 220 damage output, similar to what we've seen on Azations. Um, so it's something to bear in mind, especially if its typing remains strong in this format. Colossal can also add in some fire type text, so you're basically a bit of an anti-meta stage two deck, really. Phalanx and Phalanx V, I know a lot of people are kind of excited to test some of this stuff out. Uh, you try and make your baby Phalanx hit a lot, and also um, with the defense of the Vs, try and make them tanky boys. I think it's kind of meme -y. I think these guys are just not great, but if you want to test them out, by all means. Unfortunately, you do have to go ahead and get all four of the Phalanx V if you want to try this deck out, uh, just through the nature of how the deck works. They're kind of stronger together. That's really their thing. We've got ourselves uh, the Baby Dragapult. Um, now, it is that annoying coin flip boyo that also is able to basically do a mini version of what the V Max can. You do 120 to the active and three counters anywhere. You can try and weave in those horror energies. You can try and weave in those spell tags. Um, and be basically a new age version of Whimsicott with a lot more control of damage placement, which I think is pretty appealing. My biggest issue is that Dreepy is a 60 hit point basic and Dragapult VMAX is probably going to body that. Also, um, if people find ways around the coin flips or just gust around you with boss's orders, um, they can pick you off quite easily, especially things like ADP. They only need to do that a couple times. If Fion's in the game, etc., that's going to make me think this is more of a fun deck than a strong deck. 
Same thing really can be said for the Galarian Cursler. If they hit into you and you flip heads, they get knocked out as well, which is, you know, really punishing. But unfortunately, the corner attack just isn't really doing enough to pressurize the opponent for the most part. Clefable, again, similar to um, the Toxtricity and the Turf Field. I was very close to putting these on the front page because I really do think these are my top considerations. I think I'll personally be picking these up from this slide. Um, because this ability is very frustrating for people to deal with, especially in combination with um, Super Scoop Ups or with um, Scoop Up Nets. So spamming that for disruption definitely seems strong, and it might be the direction that control goes in the future. So do keep an eye out for these. I've said a 2+, plus because I can foresee it being a 2-2 line, um, but it could be more if you want to lean even more into it. We've seen things like Hydrogen builds have you know, really thick lines of, like, Raichu just to paralyze every turn. You could see a similar case here to be said for, like, a bunch of Clefables coming in. Something to bear in mind, the lower form of the Clefairy is actually better if you use the Hidden Fates one. That's the artwork back here, uh, because it has an attack that can get you back a supporter, or it can get you a supporter from your deck, I think it is. Um, so that's stronger than the Clefairy that we get from this set, so you might have to go back and try and pick some of those up. Glarian Weezing has that really pesky ability that when it's in the active, it shuts off all of your opponent's ability car, uh, abilities in play or coming into play, which is really nice. Your own stuff sticks around so you can have your own engine working, either buffing the damage from this guy or having hit and run style attackers and have Jirachi to help remain consistent. I think personally its damage output is a little bit below the bar, but I know a handful of people are a bit more hyped on it than I am, so something to bear in mind. Uh, where else can we go? We've gone over all the VMAXs, we've gone over this stuff. So a 1-1 Galarian Mr. Rhyme could be worth putting into the binder. Um, it reminds me of the old Espeon. Um, it has a very similar ability where if you have energies on your guys, you prevent all effects of attacks uh, from your opponent's stuff. So that's pretty handy. Milotic V. Uh, I think this is low-key kind of going to be a flop, but the damage output that it has uh, is very decent with Galamine and Absol and stuff like that. Ultimately, I think it was too hard for me to make work with any form of Accelerator. People have tried it with ADP, Welder, and Frostmoth. I think all of those um, are just a little bit inconsistent, which was my biggest worry here. Especially because if you're going for a Beat Stick, there are like better Beat Stick decks you can try and attempt. Vika Vault is another attempt of a Beat Stick, really, with that powerful Storm. Trying to take advantage of the old Charger Bug that I've got back here. Uh, also, there's this Grubbin, which is the one that can search out other Lightning Pokemon for you. So... Uh, you only need to pick up the Vika Volts if you've already got this stuff, or you need to look back at some of the previous sets to get the Charge Bug and the Grubbin that you want. Um, but you try and use that battery ability on Charge Bug, attach them immediately to Vika Volts. They don't count as your hand attachment for turn. So once you've found a bunch of Charge Bugs, that can make that powerful storm do a huge amount of damage. Flapple, I think a 4 4 line of the Apple and Flapple, or the Applin and Flapple, I should say are in order here because if you're going to try and make this card work, it's going to be one of these cards that you try and spam, try and have a handful of turf field stadiums alongside this, a bunch of other search options, and you're just trying to apple drop as much as possible to um, put extra damage counters into play. It's an interesting card. I think ultimately it may be uh, worse than just using Scoop Up Neck uh, and Galarian Zigzagoon or uh, use things like a Distortion Door Giratina in the um, Dragapult decks, but certainly something you could try out for a bit of fun. Duraladon could be a nice uh, baby Eveltol style card for the Metal Archetypes, where you get a little bit of poke pressure on, set things up for knockouts whilst also accelerating to the bench. I think for the most part, um, we've kind of gone past that era where these styles of effects are actually useful. But there may be moments uh, where this little 30 prod is putting things into range and is actually super uh, relevant, so just something to bear in mind. And finally, we have more general cards that I think are decent at picking up. Double V seems like it might be worth putting a one of or picking up a one of. I didn't say it was really guaranteed to get this guy because I've actually not put him in any of my welder decks, and I think um, it's not as good as things like Cramorant. I think Cramorant normally gets in the list before a dub wool. And Cramorant already is like a 61st consideration card. So double, kind of like only being a late game card makes it a little bit worse than the Cramorant. Because at the very least, if you lead Cramorant, it has that early game beat catch. Double doesn't really have that going for it. 
Training Court, again, one of these cards that I think has some decent future potential, especially when Viridian Forest rotates. I think this card might get a bit more of a look in. Right now, it's completely in the shadow of Viridian, but um, seeing as though Viridian deck thins for you, also gives you discard synergy, um, and is basically extra outs in the early game to get yourself an attachment. Training Court is none of those things, but it is like late game, making sure that you don't have an energy drought. Um, so um, definitely seems a lot worse than Viridian, but may um, become still viable for decks that need to turn attach every single turn. Curse Shovel, I believe, is going to not be the best way to play Mill, but um, it could be something you look for. And if you are going to try and play it, you've got to play it in high counts because people will naturally be using Boss's Orders a bunch to get around active Pokemon. If you're against Mill anyway, they're always looking to Boss's Orders against Dolls. So Curse Shovels probably need to be in a high count if you are going to commit to that instead of or in addition to the Belelba engine. Then we have um, four Skylar, four Sonya, and three Elena as supporters that I believe are slightly below the bar. Skylar had her heyday for sure, but with the new supporter rule changes, I believe she is way less effective. Uh, I'd much rather be digging into the deck rather than uh, picking out a key piece, especially because there really aren't that many valuable trainers right now. Um, especially when our, most of our trainer gust now goes into the form of supporter gust. Really, the Skylar's only helping you find, like, ball search, and you'd rather just dig into the deck to try and find pieces rather than scout out uh, with the Skylar. Sonya also feels quite slow. We've seen that Professor Oak's setting, Professor Elm's lecture, those sorts of effects really have gone away since the rule changes, uh, where you can't play a supporter on your first turn if you are the player going first. And Sonya really is a competitor to those sorts of cards, but ultimately um, feels a lot slower in the game with the rule changes. And Olena is similar to Curse Shovel, one of these cards that I don't foresee being a huge hit in Mill, but may end up being good enough. So I have said pick up a few of them. Um, obviously with rotation as well, things like Lusamine Go. Uh, we do still have things like Power Pad though, so maybe Olena is infinite enough to get a few usages. I think ultimately that's probably not going to be the case, so I'm going to hold off on buying her for now. So that is the buy list, guys. Hope you enjoyed. I gave a brief overview of most of these cards. I'm sure you're fairly familiar with what they do now. You can start running into some of these things on ladder. Let me know what you're going to be buying from the Believer buy list. You're going to be holding off on cards in general uh, with the coronavirus right now, or are you going to pick up a few things just to say, uh, just to. Uh, Make sure you have them for when you need them. I'll hear it all down below. Let me know what you're enjoying on PTCGO right now. And I'll be moving into deck lists very shortly. So thanks so much for watching. And I'll see you in another video tomorrow. Cheers.